All right, so I moved to a new place and uh, I've been putting everything in boxes, repackaging stuff. I got two big ass boxes full of wires. And uh, what I also need to process are uh, some chargers I got a while ago. So I bought these four Apple chargers at the flea market. Uh, two of them are Firewire and two of them are USB. Right, and what's interesting is there are two generations here. The yellower ones are the older ones and uh, have uneven numbers, unrounded numbers. So let's see, 12 volts, 1.0 amps. And then there's an older one, I think, which is 0.64. Let me actually zoom in a bit, which is way more faded and that's 12.5 actually. So the Firewire standard had a very wide uh, input range. I think it was up to 15 or some stuff. Anyway. And so yeah, these unfortunately will be the topic of perhaps even no video or a future video because I don't have any Firewire wires. Or I might have one in the box, but I mean, you saw how much shit is in there. We don't have time for this. Um, so anyway, I got two of these old USB ones and what I like about having weak USB chargers is that I can uh, charge my stuff very slowly, which is something that helps me sleep better at night. And um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's two of them. One is one amp and the other is 0.64, I think. What was it? No, they're both one amp, are they? Yeah. All right, so I'm talking shit as always. Um, there is quite a difference though between them, so let's actually bring the scale in. Alright, so this one is 71 and this one is 63 actually. Well, I mean it has to be 63. Damn it, it's 64. Anyway. Uh, and just for comparison, this is a 40 watt mag safe, 45 watt mag safe, so... 63 for what is that 5 watts 45 132 right so it's just way heavier uh, just for completeness the firewire ones around 85 all right uh, so the problem is one of these is not working and this is why we are here this is why the video is taking place so the lighter one I don't suspect is fake but it's it's eerily light Right, it's eerily light. It's it's a bit rattly inside even. Right, so it's it's a bit suspicious. Right, let's let's just call it that. So uh, just for completeness' sake, let's actually have a look at uh, make this tiny tiny tester so we can angle these a lot better. Let's try the working one. And this is five volts and let's actually load it down a bit. Okay, so uh, let's actually set the current to something a bit more decent. It's a pretty nice load from Ruidang. I do recommend it if you are ordering anything from China. It's about 10, 10 to 15 bucks and it's, it's pretty cool because you can actually enable it and disable it. And it does also measure some stuff. Anyway, so 100 milliamps, we're fine. Let's go to 500, we're also fine. There's no voltage compensation, like this is from way back in the day, right? It's from the iPod days, so. None of this fancy wire drop compensation. But it is uh, staying up there. And I would actually expect it to go way above one amp, given that it's an old design. So we're at one amp, steady. In the future, I do plan to make some uh, some noise measurements, like voltage noise. On these, I did actually get some uh, passive loads for this uh, purpose. And as I said, it does go well above its rated rating. Ooh. So 1.6 amps, we're starting to drop. Oh, and here we're really dropping. So 1.6 is kind of, although we are drawing more current from it, so it's a very simple design. 
That is nice. Look how steady that drops. I actually haven't seen this in any charger before. So you should actually draw two amps, Jesus. All right, let's go. And again, this is an advantage. I did a, t uh, I did a comparison between this and the Rui Dang meter. And this goes down to like 2.5 and you can still see the display and it still measures very accurately. And that one drops off at like four volts or some stuff. And so for applications like this, it is highly advantageous to be able to see low voltages on the USB bus. So yeah, like, so we just keep loading this down and it's not even flickering, it's, it's really steady. All right, so the supply went out. So the, the load doesn't like more than uh, less than three volts, I think, right? Again, it's, it's showing completely off because the voltage is so low. Yeah, this is interesting. Like this can't load it down anymore. But uh, yeah, like this is a nice charger. Again, a charger that behaves like this might actually be valuable in certain applications, right? If you want to test something that might draw insanely much, you don't want something that cuts out, right? Or I don't know, definitely going to keep this around. Okay, and the USB port is tight, man. I mean, this is really tight. Like, I'm really tugging on it. Like, I don't think I can. It's like, yeah, tightest port I've seen in a while. And yeah, this is also, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Probably gonna get electrocute myself as well. Huh? No, I like this. Yeah, don't want to be doing this on a regular basis. All right, take the other one. And the other one, yeah, as expect, I'm expecting it to be dead because it was dead, so. So no percussive maintenance seems to bring this back to life. So let's actually see what, um, what the deal is with it, right? So let's take it apart. And um, best way I found to actually do this is with a Dremel, with a diamond uh, diamond wheel, right? So what this does is um, cut the plastic, right? By friction, basically. So it makes very little uh, chips. Uh, it creates very little chips and creates a very clean cut, right? So. Quite, uh, quite a good way to get into stuff. So without further ado, let's uh, get to it. All right, so although there is some amount of shrapnel, it has been kept to a minimum, I would say. I would uh, postulate. So give me a sec while I while I clean this. What I think is polycarbonate dust off. Although no, it's not PC. I don't know what it is. I need to watch more aid. I wonder what happens if you snort this stuff. <sighs> All right. So at this stage, we can go in with a uh, flathead, and the focus is dead. Oh, that's great. Right, so I did um, cut mostly all the way through. Is the focus still working though? I mean, that is so annoying. It's not like, hmm. Why oh, that is stupid. Apple really fucked up the firmware for the iPhone 8. Anyway. Okay, so we have focus back. Autofocus actually. And uh, so yeah, let's actually go in with the flathead and uh, liberate the rest of this. Okay, so this is coming along nicely. Okay.
It's actually not tied in that tightly. By the way, when opening this kind of shit, do be careful because the main bulk capacitor in these will still be charged if you've recently played with it. Like I have. So, let's see. I would actually like everything to go off in one piece, so let me... Alright, so we're in. Okay, so check out the strain relief on the USB port. Man, that is beautiful. Alright, so that goes in and really grabs the port. That is really sexy. And now the question is, is this legit Apple? And I don't actually think it is, to be very honest. Um, it's a good, or it might be, I don't know, right? Back in the day, they might have not done the black boards and stuff. I mean, quality looks decent, but the caps are TK. What is that? What the hell is that even? 105 degree rated, so that's not bad, but... I don't know, doesn't look like, doesn't smell like Apple to me. Although it is very nicely done, right? They have two fucking optocouplers. Why would you need two of them? Insanely nice um, blast barrier, basically. So that's a complex design. They have the, the USB port on a separate board with a little common mode choke by the... Is that or is that a regular choke? I think it's a regular choke, I don't know. Anyway. So I want to check the fuse because I suspect that's dead. So we'll lift up the board and check the capacitors as a first step. And uh, yeah, so you can see that this is an old design. You have screws inside a charger. So like, yeah, this clearly sets this back to 2005 or earlier. I mean, I would imagine like insanely nice Pieces of kit would still have such intricacies in chargers, but I don't know, nowadays you just plastic rivet that in place and be done with it, I don't know. Is the board held in any other way? No. Okay, so. I actually don't know how to get this out. Hmm. So again, right, a separate piece to allow for both USB and uh, Firewire chargers and the same rest of the shell kind of deal. So they were saving some costs, but uh, yeah. Okay, so again, this would be the point where extra caution would need to be taken around this area. We might have caps charged at 400 volts. Some people like to short them out, somehow that freaks me the fuck out, so I'll just bring a meter in and we'll have a look. Okay, so where is the main cap? So, okay. All right, see, so this would have given a very, very serious sting. And I will have to discharge him somehow, and I think I will just short them out, but, uh, uh, yeah, reluctantly. Before that, like, so the fuse is definitely fine if the caps are loaded. Yeah, otherwise I... Alright, so this is also signaling over the data lines, what type of charger it is, so that's very nice, that's kind of modern. Uh, or that standard might have been back in the day, right, because... Foxlink, okay, so... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, this looks relatively legit. I mean, if you do a fake charger, would you really put the brand name in here? 
I don't think you would. So there's a little chip here as well. It's kind of nice. And the switch mode converter chip, right? The three pin job. Does it have any switching transistor? Is that all of it? That is all of it. But I don't know, somehow this diode, like this rectifier diode is looking super dodgy. I don't know, like... They do stuff differently nowadays, that's for sure, right? So check my other video. I'll link it up over here. And you'll see the newer 5 and 10 watt chargers. And some fake ones as well. But uh, yeah, if it's not the fuse, it's not the rectifier diode, what could it actually be? And I know I haven't discharged this. I'm thinking about how to do it. Like, let's actually do it, okay. Otherwise I'm gonna forget. All right. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. I don't know. I'll grow up and uh, not be afraid of this shit anymore. I mean, I saw Mike's electric stuff, like discharge what, like, a huge ass capacitor to from 400 volts with a screwdriver just mucking around. All right, so this should be safe to touch now. I would assume. All right, anyway. That's fine. Uh, I actually don't know what to check for. I'm not uh, not that hardcore into power supplies. Uh, I don't know what what could we check. Like, do I actually leave it in the comments how you would fix a thing like this? Let's actually check the rectifier diode on the uh, low voltage side. That's uh, okay. These do actually get very, very, very hot in use. That's why they expect such a big one. So let's see, 0.15, all right. So this seems to be a Schottky diode. Check the other way. Let's actually put another one in. I don't have like high speed power supply diodes and shit. But uh, I might actually salvage one from another power supply. Just give me a moment and I'll see what I can what I can find. It's actually that diode, this diode was actually not the problem. <clears throat> this one, the new one actually measures the same. They do have a capacitor across it somehow or some some filtering or some stuff, right? Which skews that reading. I didn't actually take a close look. I was pretty sure that was gonna be blown. Um so yeah, this is actually dead. I don't know, like it's not worth salvaging anyway, but uh, so I'd assume either this voltage regulator chip thingamabob which controls these opto isolators is busted or the switching chip is busted. I have no idea. Uh, so we'll actually plug it in one last time and uh, measure if there's absolutely anything on the outputs and, um, and then we're done. Oh, absolutely zero. Absolutely zero. Let's check AC though, although... It is panicking though, so let's see, why is it doing that? Oh, it's just reference to mains, okay, yeah, and never mind. Yeah, final verdict, super dead, and uh, I think we're done. That's it for today. Have a good one, guys.